me, myself and I, Ashwin Yusuf. Welcome to MPT channel. Today's topic is brain therapy. These slides are quite random, so uh, they are not in sequence. They are selected from different slides. Um, some of the course content from the SCM, PCR, some from RCA. So uh, it's totally random. It's going to be a basic and a bit advanced. So let's start and uh, try to see pulse. So basic difference between the brachy and EBRT is you can see this is a proton 6 mv EBD curve where there is in the brachytherapy and if you go closer, it follows the inverse quad law. So that's the rapid fall off. Uh, fall off. The brachy means a short distance. So it uses the treatment uh, where distance is quite short. Another difference, you can see the dosimetry and the doses. This is the brachy doses and this is how the DVH looks like. It. But in external beam, this is what we are looking for. This is how the dosage is. So this is the difference that we need to reduce the dose to the surrounding and that can only be achieved with the brachytherapy as compared to external beam radiotherapy. Another thing, uh, if you do a dosimetry and can set the phantom and place the chamber. Minor distance difference to the chamber positioning could cause 1.4 percent of deviation. But in the brachytherapy, the chamber volume is quite large, so this could cause a huge variation in the volume. And you can see this is around 55 percent. So heavily depend on it was power. So minor additional changes cause a huge difference in our cell on the dose. So these need to be found during the planning and treatment. Those minor changes in the position of the source could cause higher dose surrounding the technology. Therapy can be divided or classified in numerous ways. This is the method of different method of treatment. So interparatory, intraluminal, molds, diffuse, interstitial. Another way of classification is the dose rate. So most common is LDR, low dose rate, and HDR, high dose rate. Nowadays, once dose rate also demand because it gives a high pulse which reflects the high dose rate but it gives uh, pulses in an R so it uh, also cover the LDR portion. If you're doing a brachytherapy some of the terminologies need to be remembered. So this is a typical isobase lines of tandem on a white the tandem and the wide. Here you can see the, these positions are called dual positions, and certain positions source will stay and deliver the dose. The stay time is called dual time. This is an indexer in which the guiding tube are connected and the source travel through these guiding tubes. Indexer numbers are quite important to remember. And the source guide tube positioning is also very important. Here you can see the effect of inverse coil law, the sharp fall off of the doses. Again, the point tip at the point, this point is a hard foot, hard, made of a hard, and this is a hollow part. So this is so called that space. One needs to measure for planning so that. Uh, you can enter the value of the dead space and source position will start from this. Uh, this point. Okay, different kind of sources. Uh, this is the traditional sources, radium needles, and in different forms, uniformly distributed isotopes, Indian club, high dose rate here, 
dumbbell hydro grade and the initial and the uh, last, uh, last point and the deal is uniform. Whereas uh, iridium source, which is nowadays quite popular, uh, comes in a different forms. Here the seeds, wire, and this is how it's looked like from the inside. So the iridium source is of energy 317 keV, and this is a mixture of gamma rays and beta rays. It's a very complex uh, decay scheme of iridium. And uh, this is a nucleus if we get a sheet, which has to be in the bottom so that uh, we can fulfill the needs of KNRA. After the layer is 3 mm, so if you want to use a lead shield, then uh, 3 mm is reduce the 50% of the activity. So you need a big wall to form shield. Can you use lead aprons for in emergency conditions? This is a typical isodose lines of iridium source. This chart is very important, and this uh, needs to be understand. You see the iridium source, all of scatter around the, along with the family. And this is the reason, uh, uh, if you do remember the TG43, which doesn't account for the inhomogeneity. So iridium source, uh, typical radial distance from source or the dose function gives, uh, overcome the deficiency of that uh, model. And uh, it allow us to treat the patient without inhomogeneity corrections. Whereas if you use IOD source, you can see the sharp fall off. So it doesn't take into account uh, the scattered components, very low in uh, IOD source. So wall 60 source have a bit uh, scattered component, it gives the dose diffusion, and cesium also gives sign of diffusion. But uh, cesium could not be used practically because of the shielding uh, yeah. issue. This is a typical source size. You can, uh, these are the things uh, for the comparison. So the iridium source is uh, popular because of high specific activity, uh, which allow us to make a very small uh, very, very small source size. This is the difference between the iridium source and the cobalt 60 source. You can see the difference in the size. Nowadays, cobalt 60 also in the clinics because of uh, higher half life, uh, so it's quite economical, but shielding requirement increases. This is after loader machine. And this is the inside of the after loader machine. <coughs> So, a uh, very robust system, wire switch, emergency stop motor is there, cable guide tube, uh, it controls the movement of the source inside uh, the patient. And uh, the safety feature is the first, the dummy source will go and check the path, and then the original source will come to play. Calibration. So uh, ideally, the calibration should be done with the power chamber. Uh, this is a typical setup. The source is at the one meter from the chamber, and you can measure the dose. But there are a lot of uncertainties, a lot of corrections, into requirement. A robust system has to be made in order to use power chamber for source calibration. Usually, source was calibrated uh, once the source was changed. And uh, the major value was uh, verified with the certificate produced by the vendor. So in practice, a uh, re-entrant chamber, re-entrant vent chamber was used, which has an applicator source holder, so the, and the collector and electrodes. The source uh, gives the higher doses at certain position, at uh, charge collected, and then air thermal strength was measured. These chambers are calibrated from the ESDSM primary uh, labs. 
Well, uh, there's a classical models, uh, radio sources, plays, and uh, Vitra, and this is a typical source terms of plays in a different position for the typical pear shaped isodose lines. These are the modern spectral bands, uh, cylinder chambers, and this is a shielding material which can be placed in order to uh, optimize the dose distribution. This is the uh, radiograph uh, for the inspection of tools which need to be used in brachytherapy. You can see the ring, applicator tandems of uh, different angles. Avoids. This is an inspection picture of ring applicator. And again, you can see the dead space here. So the physical and the internal inspection is very important for uh, therapy procedure. And also uh, how it was joined together, how it was uh, asked to be inside the patient. So the slowly check also be done. The clinician must practice before practicing on patient. And for the physics point of view, the key should keep the record of the uh, crop thicknesses and uh, the tips differences so that uh, the positioning error can be reduced. Now, with clinical aspects. So, the basics um, this is the typical cervix, and you can see the tumor here, the pterygium on the right side. So, it can be covered easily with the tandem and white, and you can see the tandem ring as well, depending on the opening of the patient. So, typical Manchester system, point A. It plays 2CM superior and 2CM lateral, and point B for the monitoring of the lower doses. So it can easily be covered this tumor. If the position of the tandem is a tilted, and then you have tilted point A position as well, uh, it should be perpendicular. And you can see the typical isodose line, pear shape. We have the 2D version, but if the genie come out of the model, then of course you have to change your plan. And you can see the tumor is going laterally and if you're seeing the point A, the shift can't be covered with the Manchester system. And it can't be covered with the tandem and white from Bachelor Street. So 3D dose ICRE guideline can be followed. And we should report these values as per guideline. So the problem with the Manchester system that if the tumor volume is large, then it will underdose. But if the tumor volume is small, then point A will overdose. So for the 3D plans, one should optimize according to the volume. Don't follow the typical Manchester system. And uh, this is the way. Uh, Really mark the point on the rectum and the point of the bladder to monitor the dose of the bladder and the rectum.
This is a dose distribution of uh, tangle and white. Uh, if we insert the needles, then of course we can easily modify and optimize your doses according to the volume. There are two ways of inserting the needles. One is the insertion via vaginal wall, the other one is the insertion via pineal. This is a typical acid design of different applications. Uh, a bit about an ultrasound for the prostate tracheotherapy, therapy, ultrasound guided prostate tracheotherapy. therapy, typical pictures, and this is how the volume was marked on ultrasound. And this is an ultrasound guided uh, ICD design. But if you go with the CT plans, then of course you may have a better. Uh, Isolate distribution and you can monitor the level of ladder and uh, This is uh, uh, one of the best couch, I believe, uh, for the brachytherapy because uh, the typical brachytherapy couch is you have to shift the patient using the board on the CD, but this couch allow you to a uh, rigid system and uh, you can see the couch is on the Keep couch, keep us fine, and there is no need to move the patient, uh, remove the patient from the original bracket couch. Thank you for listening. Um, keep watching and share these videos. I hope you have enjoyed our presentation.